In the ever-evolving world of technology, Tech Mahindra stands out as a leading global IT solutions company. This video is designed to guide you through the top 25 interview questions and answers that you may encounter during your Tech Mahindra interview. From technical to hour related queries, these well curated questions and answers will equip you with the knowledge you need to confidently face your interview. So, get ready to prepare yourself for your upcoming Tech Mahindra interview with this informative video. 1. Tell me about yourself and your background in technology. I am a passionate technologist with a bachelor's degree in computer science and over eight years of experience in the IT industry. My journey began as a software developer where I was exposed to several programming languages such as Java, Python, and C. This role fueled my interest in technology and led me to explore other areas like cloud computing, database management, and DevOps practices. I have worked with several MNCS, leading and contributing to various complex projects. My most recent role was as a senior software engineer at ABC. 2. Why are you interested in working for Tech Mahindra? Having been an admirer of Tech Mahindra's dedication to innovation, it has always been my aspiration to be part of a team that fosters creativity and encourages novel ideas. I am drawn to the diverse opportunities the company offers for its employees to grow professionally and personally. The company's commitment to developing groundbreaking technological solutions and its focus on sustainability aligns with my personal values and career goals. 3. What do you know about Tech Mahindra's services and areas of expertise? Tech Mahindra provides a wide range of information technology services and solutions to multiple industries worldwide. Their services encompass areas such as cloud computing, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cybersecurity, data analytics, and digital transformation. They also offer software development, consulting, and system integration services. Tech Mahindra stands out in its commitment to innovation, quality, and delivering tailored solutions to its clients. They have proven expertise in serving telecom industries, which sets them apart from many other IT services companies. They continually strive to stay ahead of technological advancements in order to provide the most efficient, effective, and innovative solutions to their clients. 4. Describe a challenging project you've worked on and how you overcame obstacles. One of the most challenging projects I worked on was developing an inventory management system for a large retail company. The project was complex due to the high volume of data and the necessity for real-time updates across multiple platforms. The main obstacle was ensuring the accuracy of data and minimizing system downtime. I tackled these obstacles by implementing stringent data validation checks and error handling procedures. I also ensured that the system was robust by designing it to handle large volumes of data without crashing. I used agile development methodologies which allowed for incremental updates and quick problem resolution. In terms of minimizing system downtime, I incorporated automated testing and continuous integration tools into the development process. This helped to identify and fix any potential issues before they could impact the live system. 5. What programming languages are you proficient in, and how have you applied them in your work? As a seasoned software developer, I am proficient in several programming languages such as Python, Java, C++, and JavaScript. Python is my most frequently used language due to its simplicity and versatility. I have used it for various tasks from data analysis, web scraping to building machine learning models. In my previous role, I was responsible for building a data pipeline using Python which significantly improved the efficiency of our data processing. Java and C++ have been instrumental in my work on software development. I have utilized Java to develop robust server-side applications and C++ for high-performance tasks. 6. Explain the concept of object-oriented programming and its key principles. Object-oriented programming, OOP, is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, which are instances of classes. These objects can contain data, in the form of fields, and code, in the form of procedures. The key principles of OOP are encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and abstraction. Encapsulation refers to the bundling of data and methods that manipulate that data within one unit, the object. This hides the internal state of the object from the outside. Inheritance is a mechanism that allows you to create a new class using properties of an existing class. Polymorphism allows objects of different types to be treated as objects of a common supertype allowing for more flexible and reusable code. 7. What is your experience with cloud computing, and how do you ensure security in cloud environments? My experience with cloud computing spans several years in diverse projects. I have worked with major cloud platforms like Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud. I have developed and deployed applications, managed data storage, and implemented serverless architecture. I have also been responsible for scaling and optimizing cloud resources according to project requirements. Security in cloud environments is critical, and I ensure it through several strategies. I adhere strictly to the principle of least privilege, limiting access rights for different users. I also make use of encryption for data at rest and in transit. 
Regular audits and monitoring help me identify potential security threats early, and I keep the software and systems updated to the latest versions to minimize vulnerabilities. Compliance with industry standard security norms and guidelines is another key aspect of my approach to ensuring cloud security. 8. How do you stay updated with the latest trends and technologies in your field? I maintain my knowledge of the newest trends and technologies in my industry by dedicating a portion of my time to continuous learning. This includes reading relevant industry blogs, attending professional development workshops, and participating in webinars. Additionally, I subscribe to several tech-focused newsletters to receive updates directly in my inbox. I also participate in online forums where other professionals share their insights and experiences. Lastly, I try to attend industry conferences and networking events where I can interact with other professionals and learn about the latest advancements firsthand. 9. Describe your experience with Agile methodologies and how you've implemented them in projects. In my previous role as a project manager, I've extensively used Agile methodologies for software development. My experience has been primarily with Scrum, where I played the role of Scrum Master for a team of seven developers. I would facilitate daily stand-up meetings, help remove blockers, and ensure the team was able to work smoothly. In addition to Scrum, I've also implemented Kanban in projects where we needed to manage a continuous flow of tasks. I found that a mix of these methodologies often work best, depending on the nature of the project and the team's preferences. I've also used tools like Jira and Trello to manage the backlog and track progress. These experiences have helped me understand the benefits of Agile, such as increased productivity, better quality of products, and improved customer satisfaction. 10. What is your approach to debugging and troubleshooting complex technical issues? Debugging and troubleshooting technical issues is an integral part of any tech professional's job. My approach to such situations involves a systematic process of identifying the problem's source, diagnosing it, and then resolving it. I usually start by replicating the issue to understand it better. This involves analyzing the code and using debugging tools to trace the problem. Once I've diagnosed the issue, I start working on the probable solutions. I believe in documenting every step of this process as it helps in future references and for others who might encounter the same issue. I also believe in regular testing after resolving the issue to ensure it doesn't recur. This methodical and thorough approach has proven effective in my previous roles. 11. How do you handle working in a team with diverse skill sets and backgrounds? I believe that diversity in a team brings a wide range of perspectives, experiences, and ideas, which can provide innovative solutions to problems. My approach to working in such a team is to promote open communication and respect for each member's contributions. I make it a point to learn from my team members' unique skills and backgrounds. By fostering an environment of collaboration and mutual respect, I encourage everyone to contribute their best work. By maintaining a positive attitude and demonstrating flexibility, I can adapt to a diverse team environment and work effectively with people with different skills and background. 12. Explain the difference between HTTP and HTTPS protocols. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, while HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. HTTP is a protocol used for transmitting hypertext via the internet. It doesn't have any security, meaning data sent is not encrypted and can be intercepted by attackers. On the other hand, HTTPS is a secure version of this protocol. It uses SSL, TLS protocols to encrypt data transmitted between a user's browser and the web server. This ensures that sensitive information such as login details or credit card information remains secure and cannot be intercepted. HTTPS also verifies the identity of the server, providing assurance to the user that they are communicating with the intended website. In terms of performance, HTTPS can be slightly slower due to the encryption process, but the difference is often negligible and the security benefits far outweigh this minor drawback. HTTP, short for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, transfers hypertext requests and information between servers and browsers with no security. This means that data can be intercepted by attackers. 13. What is your experience with DevOps practices and tools? I have substantial experience with DevOps practices and tools, having worked in a DevOps environment for over four years. I am well versed in principles such as continuous integration, continuous delivery, and infrastructure as code. I regularly use tools like Jenkins for CI, CD, Docker for containerization, and Ansible for configuration management. I also have experience using cloud platforms like AWS and Azure to manage and deploy applications in a DevOps context. I believe DevOps is essential for efficient and reliable software delivery, and I strive to continuously improve my skills and knowledge in this area. 14. How do you ensure code quality and maintainability in your projects? I ensure code quality by adhering to best coding practices such as writing clean, readable, and modular code. 
Using design patterns wherever applicable also helps in maintaining the consistency of code. For maintainability, I focus on building scalable systems which can be easily updated or modified according to project requirements. I utilize tools like static code analyzers and linters to catch potential bugs or inefficiencies in the code. Additionally, I make sure to write comprehensive unit and integration tests, which not only ensures that the code behaves as expected, but also makes it easier to refactor or add new features in the future. 15. Describe a situation where you had to learn a new technology quickly for a project. In my previous role as a software engineer at XYZ Company, I was tasked with implementing a feature using React Native, a technology I was not familiar with at the time. The feature was crucial for the project and had a tight deadline, making it imperative for me to learn and apply this new technology quickly. I started by dedicating a couple of hours each day to understand the basics of React Native, leveraging online resources, tutorials, and documentation. My next step was to create a simple app to get hands-on experience. Once I felt comfortable with the basics, I began implementing the feature in our project. Through this experience, I learned not only about React Native but also about the importance of adaptability and continuous learning in the technology field. 16. What is your understanding of microservices architecture and its benefits? Microservices architecture refers to a design approach in software development where a large application is built as a suite of modular components or services. Each service runs its own process and communicates with others through mechanisms like HTTP, REST or messaging queues. The major benefits are scalability and flexibility. Scalability because services can be deployed independently, allowing for efficient use of resources based on demand. Flexibility because teams can use different technologies for different services, depending on what fits best. The architecture also enables continuous delivery and deployment, improving the speed and reliability of software releases. Additionally, it increases fault isolation. In case of a service failure, only that particular service is affected, not the entire application. 17. How do you approach performance optimization in software development? Performance optimization is a critical aspect of software development. It involves making the software run as efficiently and quickly as possible. My approach starts with understanding the software's functionality and identifying potential bottlenecks. I focus on writing clean, efficient code and make use of profiling tools to pinpoint areas of inefficiency. I also pay close attention to database queries and server configuration, as these are often significant contributors to performance issues. Memory management is another area I focus on to ensure resources are used effectively. Testing plays a key role, as it allows me to confirm whether the optimizations made have had the desired effect. Lastly, I believe in continuous learning and staying updated with the latest optimization techniques and best practices in the industry. 18. Explain the concept of RESTful APIs and their importance in modern web development. RESTful APIs, short for Representational State Transfer, are a type of API design architecture. They allow developers to create, read, update, and delete data through standard HTTP methods, which makes them highly compatible and easy to work with. The importance of RESTful APIs in modern web development lies in their simplicity and efficiency. They are stateless, meaning that every request is independent and contains all the information needed to complete itself. This makes RESTful APIs perfect for cloud-based applications, as they can handle multiple requests at the same time without running into issues. Furthermore, because they use standard HTTP methods, they can be easily integrated with existing web services. 19. What strategies do you use for effective project management and meeting deadlines? I prioritize tasks according to their urgency and importance using the Eisenhower matrix. This helps me to focus on tasks that contribute most to project goals. Regular progress updates are crucial for me to stay on track with deadlines and keep stakeholders informed. For larger projects, I break them into smaller, manageable tasks using agile methodologies. This not only makes the project less overwhelming but also allows for the early detection of potential issues. I also make sure to allocate some buffer time for unexpected roadblocks. Having this flexibility allows me to adapt to changes without compromising the project deadline. 20. How do you handle conflicts or disagreements within a team? In my experience, conflicts often arise due to miscommunication or misunderstanding. When I encounter such situations, I first try to understand the root cause by facilitating a conversation between the parties involved. This often helps in clearing any misconceptions and brings clarity to the issue at hand. If the conflict is about a decision or a task, I encourage open discussions where everyone can express their opinions. This way, we can come up with a solution that respects everyone's perspectives and is in the best interest of the project. It's also essential to ensure that these discussions remain professional and respectful. Dealing with conflicts is never easy, but I believe it's an essential aspect of teamwork and collaboration. 21. 
Describe your experience with database management systems and SQL. As a seasoned technology professional, I have gained extensive experience in handling database management systems, specifically SQL. I began my journey in the technology field as a junior developer, where I was first introduced to SQL as part of my role. I quickly grasped the language due to its logical syntax and powerful capabilities. I have been involved in numerous projects where I was responsible for creating, managing, and optimizing SQL databases. This required me to not only understand the technical aspects of SQL, but also the strategic implications of database management. I have worked with both relational and non-relational databases, which has allowed me to understand the different strengths and weaknesses of each type. I have also gained experience in data modeling and database design, which helps me in creating efficient and effective databases. 22. What is your approach to ensuring data security and privacy in applications? To ensure data security, I implement multiple layers of protection. Firstly, I use strong encryption methods for data in transit and rest. Secondly, I utilize secure coding practices to prevent vulnerabilities such as SQL injections or cross-site scripting. Lastly, I apply access controls to limit who can access the data. For data privacy, I adhere strictly to legal compliances like GDPR or HIPAAI ensure that only necessary data is collected, and it is used for the intended purpose. I also ensure clear communication to users about what data is being collected and its purpose. 23. How do you stay motivated when working on long-term, complex projects? My motivation for long-term, complex projects comes from my passion for technology and problem-solving. I find great satisfaction in overcoming challenges, and this enthusiasm fuels my perseverance. I set clear, achievable goals for each phase of the project, which allows me to track my progress and stay focused. Celebrating small victories along the way also keeps me motivated. Additionally, I maintain a positive mindset and look for learning opportunities in every situation. I believe that every project, no matter how complex, contributes to my growth as a professional and enhances my skills. I also value the importance of work-life balance and make sure to take regular breaks to recharge and refresh my creativity. 24. Explain the importance of version control systems and your experience with them. Version control systems are crucial in software development as they allow multiple individuals to work on a project without stepping on each other's toes. They provide a comprehensive history of changes made, making it easier to revert to previous versions if necessary. My experience with version control systems began with GitHub. I have used it extensively in my projects, which has helped me keep track of updates and collaborate effectively with other team members. Understanding the importance of version control systems, I later expanded my knowledge to other systems like Subversion, SVN, and Mercurial. They have all proven to be valuable tools in managing code and ensuring smooth collaboration in the teams I have been part of. 25. Where do you see yourself professionally in the next five years? I envision myself taking on bigger challenges and responsibilities within IT sector, potentially in a leadership role. My aim is to continue learning and enhancing my skills, particularly in emerging technologies, which will enable me to make significant contributions to the organization. I also see myself mentoring junior team members, sharing the knowledge and experience I have gained. My goal is not just to grow individually but also to positively impact the team and organization I am part of. To wrap things up, we hope this comprehensive list of the top 25 Tech Mahindra interview questions and answers has been helpful in your preparation. These questions are designed to give you a sneak peek into the kind of queries you might face and help you frame your responses in a way that will impress your interviewer. Remember, confidence and clarity are key during an interview and your understanding of the role and the company will set you apart. If you found this video informative and helpful, please do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more such content. Best of luck with your interview.